Irish guy, and I'm sorry, but lads, the football in 2022 was insane. The amount of weird, stupid moments in this sport. I mean, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, last New Year's Eve, did some weird witch doctor put a curse on this sport? Because honestly, lads, this year, football will be more dramatic than a plotline of Holly Oaks. Right, let's go. January, African Cup of Nations mess. Well, the year started off in mental fashion when the African Cup of Nations match between Tunisia and Mali ended in chaos when the referee blew the full-time whistle early twice. I mean, the first was on 85 minutes, but I mean, with Tunisia 1-0 down, their bench reacted to this as if the referee had just kicked their grandma in the chin. So yeah, I mean, he then realized his mistake and resumed the match, right? Fine. But then he sends off a Mali player, which infuriates their bench, and clearly the pressure must have just melted his brain like an ice cream in the sun, because then he blows up again on 89 minutes. I mean, not only was there no injury time, but they didn't even get to play the full 90. I mean, 40 minutes after the match, the referee was forced to restart the game, and the Mali players came back on, but the Tunisians didn't. I mean, they just stayed in their dressing room to sulk. I mean, to be fair, it was 40 minutes later. They were probably all showered, had their links Africa, and were now probably back in their clothes. I mean, do you really want to resume this game? When half the squad probably still has shampoo in their eyes? Just, ah, uh, what was this? Rooney rejects Everton. As nobody noticed, just how bad a year this has been for Wayne Rooney. I mean, this guy right now is probably stuffing his face with donuts, while letting the dog lick peanut butter off his thigh. Just living his life as the Scouse Homer Simpson. I mean, don't get me wrong, this could have been a brilliant 2022 for him. I mean, he began this year with a stock sky high, but he instead stupidly turned down a job interview at his boyhood Everton in January. To instead choose to get relegated to League One with Derby County. I mean, lads, when he was off in the lifeline to quit for Everton, Derby had won four out of the last five games, but um, when he chose to commit to the club, that form quickly slid off a cliff and into a puddle of frog vomit. And uh, so he wound up quitting in the summer anyway, has moved back to the MLS with DC United, where he since lost 6 0, and the club has been fined 21 thousand pounds for even daring to appoint him. He's also been embarrassingly portrayed by some chubby actor in the Rebecca Vardy courtroom drama. Harry Kane is about to take his England goal scoring record. I mean Cristiano Ronaldo has probably hinted to about 10 million people that Rooney is about as attractive as a caveman's foot. Oh yeah and he's now spending this Christmas just desperately texting KSI for a boxing fight and did you not learn from the time that Phil Barsley banged him off a fridge? Choosing to turn on the job of your dreams. The actual Everton job. To now embark on this sort of pig stink year? Ozzy Rooney, this was just stupid. February, Sunderland signed the foe. <laughs> this was just sad. Sunderland fans don't ask for much. I mean, Christoph, how can you when your entire city smells like Hagrid's underpants? But at the start of the year, these Depressed talents people were given a shot in the arm. The announcement that they're signing old hero Jermaine Defoe from Rangers on a free. Leading to some excited fans to stand in a car park at midnight, neglecting the shepherd's pie waiting for them at home just to try and spot Defoe in a car. Is it Defoe? It's gotta be. There's a photograph being taken. I'm gonna run down. Come on. Let's have a look. Is it? D does this man not have a wife and kids? Right. It's not Jermaine Defoe. Let's get off this property quick. Uh, I don't know who it is, he's a... Uh... This is like watching the Blair Witch Project in Sunderland. Except in that case, everyone looks like a ghost. Are we alright? Uh, who we got here? Chris, uh, Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe in the back. Jermaine Defoe is in the back. Here he is. All right. We have a comment. Don't we? Just... Uh, Jermaine! Oh, Christ, well, this reminds me of those sort of videos on the internet, which would make it look like Defoe is there to meet up with a 12-year-old boy. Oh, it's Jermaine Defoe is in the back! There he is! We're live! We're live on SCFC Fan TV! Jermaine Defoe, see you, lads, see you! There you go! Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah. He retired the next month. That kind of killed the excitement dead, right? I mean, it's a bit like turning up to a Liam Gallagher concert, only for him to just sing half of Wonderwall and go home. Kurt Zuma and his cat. There aren't many footballers who destroy their reputations more than Kurt Zuma this year. I mean, before 2022, everyone just looked at him as a brick center half who seemed like a giggly, happy, nice guy. Now, in then proceeds to think he's in an episode of Itchy and Scratchy, essentially filming himself kicking and slapping his cat. Ozzy was like a crossover between Fight Club and Tom and Jerry. I mean, maybe his girlfriend had just traumatized him by making him sit through cats. Yeah, seeing Judy Dench in a cat wig would make anyone go insane. But yeah, um, West Ham find him a quarter of a million pounds. Well done, Kurt. Seems like you do have the brains of oat milk. But first, let me briefly interrupt this video to let you know this video is sponsored by Wash and Go. 
Washing go what? Washing go your hair? I'm sorry, but for me, I cannot live without this. Do I want to have hair so sticky and, I don't know, feels like the backside of a dog? No! I'd rather people didn't throw their garbage at me in the streets. Lads, the Wash & Go 2-in-1 Shampoo & Conditioner combines the cleansing power of shampoo with the health hair benefits of conditioner. An all-in-one convenient step. And I'm sorry lads, by me telling you this, I'm literally giving you the secrets to life. But lads, this is formulated with nourishing ingredients that work to strengthen and moisturize your hair so you can have it soft, shiny and manageable. I mean, look how happy I am. Look, I look like I'm gonna faint with relief. Probably because before that, I'd just be washing my hair with toothpaste. But no more lads, why waste time and money on separate shampoo and conditioner when you can get both in the two-in-one sh wash and go shampoo and conditioner. Honestly, it wouldn't make sense. Lads, I have had baths of milk and still, it's cleaned my hair. Try it, see the difference, thank me later. Back into the video. Wilshire signs for Danish club. Jack Wilshire. The man who the English media always build as the next big thing, but nobody would listen. Both Pope Guardiola and Roy Keane publicly said that this fella was overrated, but I mean, as soon as they said that, the Arsenal fans reacted as if both men had just accused their mums of looking like Himalayan pigs. But uh, yeah, here he was in February, signing for Aarhus Gymnastic Foreigners. Suddenly then, ironically, he sounds like a fat cap for single mums. Um, yeah, he didn't win a single one of his 15 games for the club and retired in May. I mean, we should have known this was a midlife crisis when he dyed his hair bright with the butter. Kept his cup final penalty. This was arguably the greatest penalty shootout I've ever seen in my life. Chelsea and Liverpool played out a tense nil-nil draw in the League Cup final. And then all 11 Liverpool players netted in the shootout. All 10 outfield Chelsea players did too. It was literally penalty perfection. Um, until Kep Arizabalaga stepped up. I mean, he already embarrassed himself in one League Cup final when Maurizio Sarri was in charge. This time, another one. Stepping up to take a penalty, and he nearly kicks it off the moon. Did he think it was a goal kick? I'm sorry, after 21 perfect penalties, the big contrast. I mean, it was like walking through an art museum. Everything looked stellar and pitch perfect. But um, then in the corner of the room, you just see dog poo smeared on the wall. Lads, I so bad wanted to see this penalty shootout go back around again. I mean, if Kep had just scored, then at the very least, both James Milner and Marcus Alonso would have had to take two penalties. I mean, wouldn't that have made things so very interesting after they've already shown their hand and taken one and their bodies would have already clapped with relief to then have to go again but no instead Kappa had to let everyone down by showing that he's got the kicking skills of soggy marmalade March all these protests yeah I mean you remember back in March when Newcastle travelled to Everton in a crunch relegation battle yeah I mean the scores were nil nil and then Alfie runs onto the pitch and ties himself to the post I know Alfie okay I know that was just what two days after I just left my previous channel so maybe he he knew I'd be watching the match and was sent by the boss to get my attention. But it seems very drastic though. I mean, is there no other ways of winning my heart? You could have just stood with a boombox at some big window. I mean, the guy just limply stood there, looking a bit like someone who probably Googles naked feet and demands to be called the Riddler. Not even a life-size hamster could free him from the post. Honestly, you could have only read half a Harry Potter book in the same time he was stuck to the post. And in the end, Alex Wolby scored the winner in the 99th minute. Not sure what happened to Alfie though. I hope they let him have his vegan coconut milk in prison. Bye, but lads, if you're new here, then slap that big fat red subscribe button, lads. I'm trying to grow this channel in 2023. Big things are coming. Starting from January, big things are coming for the channel. If you want to join the journey and be part of the greatest football channel on YouTube, then what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, you absolute legends. All right, join us here. This is the greatest community on the internet. All right, slap that button, you absolute legends. Back into the video. Italy out of World Cup. This was lunacy. Italy, crowned champions of Euro 2020. I mean, the papers were even tipping Roberto Mancini to take the Man United job. And yet here, they lose a World Cup playoff at home to North Macedonia. I mean, Mancini is lucky that he won the Euros because this is a sackable offence. I have no doubt in my mind that if England had won the final last summer and then this happened, Mancini would have been grabbed by the ears and flung into traffic, failing to get to two World Cups in a row for a country like Italy. It makes about as much sense as Ryan Clark's success. What for the point, Edwards? What was the point? This was one of the most unnecessary toxic breakups in football this year. In May, Watford dumped Roy Hodgson for a younger mob. I mean, Rob Edwards is nearly 40 years younger. Honestly, it was like when Hugh Hefner dumped his first wife. But yeah, Edwards gets a two-year deal with Forest Green Rovers kicking up a fuss and accusing Watford of going behind their back. Honestly, if Forest Green were so outraged, it's where they just found traces of steak in their sandwich. I, you know, they're, they're the angry vegans, the ones who probably hate leather belts. 
You know who you are! But yeah, what is insane to me is that the Warford Chief Executive vowed to back Edwards come hell or high water. Um, yeah, he gets sacked after 11 games. And now coaches lose in town. I mean, what was the point? If Watford were a woman, they'd be dumping every boyfriend as soon as they accidentally spill cookie crumbs on the floor. April, Ronaldo smashes foe. This was the beginning of the end for Cristiano Ronaldo. It's bad enough for Manchester United to lose Goodison Park, but then a Ronaldo smashing a little boy's foe, triggering a mom probably called Karen to just refuse to let this thing go. I mean, she wouldn't even accept his apology. I mean, if he'd come around the house for dinner, she'd probably have poisoned his food. Or at least chucked a bit of cat food in the mashed potato. Honestly, she sounded like the mum of Malcolm in the middle. Sorry, Ronnie. But uh, you smashed the wrong boy's phone? Burnley sacked Deutsch. Listen, I think Burnley having Vincent Company at the wheel is a nice little evolution. You can only play K-Man football for so long, but you didn't need to get relegated to make this switch. Try as well, Burnley had just pulled off a typical Sean Dyche performance by coming from behind to beat Everton in a relegation six pointer at Turf Moor. I mean, if you had thought he'd lost the dressing room, you probably also think the earth is flat and that dinosaurs are real. Choosing to sack Dyche the next week. And uh, just give the job to Michael Jackson. And no, not the disgrace guy. Where people are probably poo in his grave. Nah, it's just some failed Shrewsbury and Tranmere coach. Of course they got relegated. Dina's World Cup draw. When you're wanting to find prestigious names in world sport to conduct the World Cup draw, literally one of the most honorable jobs in football, how many people have to say no to Qatar before FIFA were having to ring up Jermaine Genus? You know that former injury riddle cheeseburger at Aston Villa and QPR? What does he know about World Cups other than, I don't know, eating a box of celebrations with Heskey in the hotel lobby? Is the equivalent of me? Asking my crippled neighbor to present Dancing with the Stars. May. Lingard wants his farewell. Remember when Jesse Lingard moaned and whined because Ralph Rannick wouldn't let him crawl out of the pitch for a Manchester United farewell? Honestly, Jesse complaining about there not being enough fuss when they left. Is this Man United or is this Little Mix? Ramsey's penalty miss. This was cruel. I dragged Frankfurt and Rangers were somehow in the Europa League final and it had gone to penalties and here was Aaron Ramsey. The guy who'd been agonizingly forced to sit and watch as Arsenal lost the Europa League final to Chelsea in Baku three years ago. Considering how he would never play for the Gunners again, I'm guessing that night was about as much fun as, I don't know, eating the skin of an uncooked pig. But here, this is his chance to resurrect his career and actually win this competition with Rangers. What a fairy tale revival for his entire life. And instead, he misses a penalty and they lose. This guy was supposed to be Rangers best player by a country mile and yet in the dressing room everyone probably just looked at him as if he's got moosey for feet. Greenish and Elmira. This is probably the comment that has aged the worst in 2022. I mean you couldn't have scripted this any better. Man City win the Premier League and then Jack Grealish proceeds to mock Bernardo Silva by saying they'd played most of the final match like Mickey Almira. You know as if Almira was about as useful as multi toilet paper. And since then Almira scored 9 goals in 16 games and is third in the league. Grealish, one goal in 17 and just missed two absolute sitters against Leeds and he keeps showing time and time again that he's got the finishing ability of a bike curious snowman. June, Hartlepool at Point Hartley. This is weird. Here was Paul Hartley being hired by Hartley Pool. I'm convinced this fellow's only given the management job because his name sounds like Hartley Pool. Honestly, Hartley Paul. Anyway, um, he gets sacked with the club 23rd in League 2 with the owner admitting he did never actually heard of Hartley before. Not even as a player. I mean, come on, that's a bit harsh. He paid for Celtic. He had nearly 30 Scotland caps. But yeah, I mean, with Hartley Pool, he signed 17 players in three months, didn't win a single match, and was sacked after nine games. Oh, what a mess. Armenia won Ireland nil. <sighs> Armenia! Actual Armenia! We lose to Luxembourg one year and then Armenia the next. Watching this match, honestly, was like me trying to digest a pie filled with snails. Just, uh, yuck! The Pogmentary. It used to be autobiographies that footballers brought out to make you like them. Uh, except Ashley Cole's book actually made him look worse. Yeah, this is the documentary version of that. Paul Pogba bringing out a vain reality TV show that honestly made him look about as out of touch as those meatheads off made in Chelsea. I mean, of course it's backfired. It's rated 1.1 1 .1 out of 10 on IMDb. All of that time and money chucked into this superficial, vomit-inducing sludge fest, and everyone has decided that they would sooner microwave their face than watch this again. Just awful. The Wout Weghorst spat. I mean, to be fair, this wouldn't be the last time Wout Weghorst got in trouble on the pitch in 2022, but this was just a bit weird. Here were Wales playing Holland in the Nations League, and um, Weghorst scores, and then his Burnley teammate Connor Roberts turned to him and said, Why did Forcing Weghorst to say, This isn't about Burnley, so shut up! And yeah, later in the year, he's basically doing the same thing to Messi. This is the year where everyone 
hates Wout. July. Chocobo Wemka wants 100k. I don't know how true this is, but I remember seeing these headlines in July and thinking to myself that... Here was an ass of it, a teenage child, Carney Chukabuemaka, a guy literally stapled to Steven Gerrard's bench, and according to the press, wanted a £100,000 a week salary to stop him quitting for Barcelona. I mean, it gets even worse, apparently Villa came and offered him that stupid wage, and he still said no, and went to Chelsea instead. 100k a week for actual children who've done nothing in the game? What? Lee Tomlin's awful debut. <laughs> Worst debut of all time? Veteran forward Lee Tomlin joined Doncaster in the summer and on his debut gets two yellow cards in the space of 17 seconds. The first for blocking a Bradford free kick before it was taken and then the next it was for diving. He gets sent off, soon retires for about six weeks. Oh yeah, and found time to slag off Sky Sports for having YouTubers on. Who cares what they say? Never kicked the ball professionally. Sky Football, you are better than this. They ain't even coaching the game either, so what they even doing? It's Oh, don't get me wrong, some footballers are shocking as well, and I wouldn't listen to them, but I'd listen to their point of view more than a YouTube guy that had never even been involved in football, that's for a fact. Yeah. Lee Tomlin hates YouTube. Oh wait! Welcome to my YouTube channel! 142 subscribers. The only people who watch this golfing videos are what? Friends of his mum? I'm beginning to realize that this guy's bitterness towards YouTubers is actual jealousy. August. Fabregas joins Como. Yeah. Back in 2008, Dennis Wise was helping Newcastle United sign players off YouTube. Now, this is back even before the days of KSI or PewDiePie, when this was just a grainy 240p website just to upload clips of dancing cats. So I would have assumed that since then, Wise would have just scuttled away and left the sport forever. I mean, wasn't that the whole point when he went on I'm a Celebrity? Instead, he's somehow the president of Como in Serie B and just signed Cesc Fabregas on a two year deal. Yes, the 90s answer to Joey Barton is actually. President. Oh, what's that gonna do to his overbloated ego? On his birthday, he's probably gonna get his wife to come out of a cake. And now he's co-owner with Fabregas. Someone who is also about 12 times the player Wise ever was. Ah yeah, Thierry Henry is also on the board. And former Sligo Rovers winger Liam Kerrigan is in the team. It's just bizarre. Man United signed Huddlestone. Okay, whatever. Man, she's not hiring Steve McLaren in 2022. But giving an under-21 coaching job to Tom Huddlestone, just a former Hull City midfield pudding with zero connection to the club? That was insanely random. Here's where it gets even weirder, though. He's officially registered as a player. He's just replaced Paul McShay. Why are Man United choosing to hire former Hull misfits? Seeing as over-the-hill meatball in a Manchester United shirt, he's literally playing in a field at Robbie Savage's side. Honestly, it just looks weird. Brentford 4, Man United 0. Manchester United were 4. 4 0 down away to Brentford after just one half of football. Enough said! Besiktas signed Ali. This has to be the nail in the coffin for Deli Ali's career. Everton was supposed to be his revival. Instead, he's barely unplayed, gets involved with Besiktas, and lands. The Turkish league is such an easy place to impress. Surprise about that Rasmus Sel was a wet weasel in the Premier League. But, well, I mean, when he went to Turkey, he was mobbed by the fans at the airport. So they were all treating him as if he was Pelly himself. But Ali. Even the Besiktas chief executive is calling him a flop and he's getting booed by his own fans. The whole thing is a joke. Liverpool 9, Bournemouth 0. If you can pinpoint a single moment where a promising manager's career is hit by a brick, you know, the Ralph Wigan moment, then this is it. Scott Parker taking Bournemouth to Anfield and losing by 9 goals to nil. Yeah, he lost his job but to make things even worse. They then go 6 games unbeaten under Gary O'Neill. Oh, Goss. Swansea last minute own goals. What an implosion. Swansea City are 2-0 up against Millwall in the championship and coasting. About to take home the three points and then he's got two own goals in the last minute. I'm guessing the Swansea coach Russell Martin must have had to stop himself from strangling people in the dressing room. Richardson's keepy uppies. Remember when Richardson did keepy uppies on the pitch against Nottingham Forest and everyone reacted to that as if he just murdered a puppy on the grass? Yeah. Hmm. Footballer from Brazil does football tricks with the ball. And everyone thinks it's almost worthy of prison time. Honestly, lads, if Ronaldinho had done that, you'd have sang about him for weeks. Honestly, just relax. September, Ross Barkley signs for Nice. This was just the most random and weird transfer of the year. Ross Barkley, a former Everton Wonder Kid, is playing in the French League, and oh yeah, has already been written off as a flop. And with his manager actually admitting that um, he didn't actually know what position he played. Oh boy! Tuchel's Chelsea sack. Well, sacking Thomas Tuchel makes zero sense. When he's recently won Chelsea the actual Champions League, what makes even less sense is replacing him with Graham Potter. The Brighton coach? I think considering he would soon fail to win five games on the bounce, would prove that, yeah, give
giving the gig to Potter, about as clever as giving chocolate to your dog, Olympiacos like Marcelo. I'm not gonna lie, it's weird to see Marcelo play for anyone but Real Madrid. Even weirder to see him join Olympiacos in Greece. I mean, I'm sure he'll do okay for them. But I mean, during the summer, we were hearing the rumors that Ronaldo Nazario, R9, wanted to bring both Dani Alves and Marcelo to Real Valladolid. And I'm sorry, but watching the modern day reincarnation of Cafu and Roberto Carlos playing together for the same club team, Samba on the wings, that would have made me drool all over my feet. But no, instead we get to see Marcelo playing a team with Dos Bowler on the wing. Better in size for Barcelona. How? Just how? Hector better into Barcelona made sense in 2016. Not now, when he was a forgotten clown in Arsenal's reserves. Playing for New York Red Bulls in the MLS was stepping out at American fashion shows during the week. That would have suited Bellerin more. But I mean, starting against Bayern Munich in the Champions League? It makes no sense. October. Casillas and Puyol's tweet. Nothing to see here, just Iker Casillas and Carlos Puyol pretending to be in love. Like actual rom-com love. Like kissing at the back of the bus love. Like the Spanish sequel The Brokeback Mountain love. Instead, it turns out it was all just... Banter. I mean, if you both fancy yourselves as well witty comedians, yeah, I dare you both to fly the guitar and repeat that joke. Won't be so funny then? QPR kiss case. This. <laughs> Just this. To any QBR fan that saw my missus kiss some six foot eighteen year old tonight away at Norwich at halftime, any information will be heavily appreciated. Kirsty Markovic, please help. Have multiple sources confirmed. <laughs> yeah, a jealous, desperate fella begging Twitter for answers. Oh, it's hardly an undercover MI5 sting. Crawley Town sidemen trials. Yeah, remember when Crawley Town invited one of the sidemen and his brother to a training session? Yeah, I mean it, it was a publicity stunt with a capital P. But Christ, well, the rest of Twitter reacted to this as if the Crawley owner had just spat on the coffin of the Queen. Lads, this isn't new. I mean, using Bolt was given a trial at Russia Dortmund. It's a stunt. It's a joke. Calm. November. PK retires. I'm sorry, but if any footballer retires midway through a season, then it's embarrassing. I mean, Jared Piquet, have you got Barcelona in November? This guy who joined the club in 1997, he's won everything for the club, played over 600 games, is an all-time legend, but having to stop in November, no! It's like pulling up with a stitch halfway through a race. I mean, either he was wrong for not leaving in June, or he was wrong for not limping through until May. Either way, such an anticlimax. Ronaldo's interview. Nothing more needs to be said. Cristiano Ronaldo choosing to whine in front of Piers Morgan and getting himself the Man United sack. Just... What? I showed speed and Jeff Shreves. This was... This was the weirdest double act I've ever seen. Jeff Shreves is a man known for trying to make grown men robots, actual footballing robots like Brandon Slavivanovich, cry on camera. So I'm um, putting him together with an actual teenage boy and I'm gonna break the news that he's traveled all the way from America to watch Cristiano Ronaldo play and Ronaldo's not even at the ground. Honestly, what? What was this? The weird Haaland bit. Yeah, because Erling Haaland wasn't going to the World Cup with Norway, non-league actually United actually asked to loan Haaland for a month. Can you imagine if Haaland did join them? You know, turning up to matches in a Bentley while his teammates had to get the bus in the rain? But no, I mean, what if he injured himself with non-league opposition players who support Man United and Arsenal literally going out onto that pitch to just break his legs? But this isn't the first time the Man City have been given joke time-wasting loan offers. Because back in 2011, after Carlos Tevez was suspended from the club, Limavati United stuck in a loan bid. They're in the Irish League. Honestly, City, just close down your email account because this must be annoying. We're gonna point Torre. Imagine being a football club looking for a new manager and your only requirement is that they have to be a Torre. No, not a Torre. A Torre. I'm sorry, but we're gonna let it. In the championship, in November, ask Yaya Torre if he would leave the Tottenham kids to take his first management role. He said no, so they just gave the gig to Colo instead. I'm sorry, but once again, poor old Colo is now just taking what Yaya didn't want. Ozzy, this is why we're like, Floyd Mayweather, he probably asked KSI for a fight and had to settle for Deji instead. I mean, come on, lads. who was the last football club you remember who interviewed two brothers for the same job? Maybe Valencia with the Nevels? Maybe, but this obsession with Torres just weird. Reina's lack of effort. Listen, I realize that Giovanni Reina is probably traumatized by World Cups because as a little boy, the watch his dad absolutely crumble on the pitch for the USA, giving the ball away to the Ghana score in 2006. But there is still no excuse. During the World Cup this year, apparently the reason he wasn't in the starting 11 is because he showed absolutely zero effort in training. It was so bad that he was almost sent home. Biggest diva of the tournament? December. Beale joins Rangers. Michael Beale as the loyalty of a skunk. Honestly, this guy turned down the Wolves job in October to stay at QPR because, I quote, I can't be the first person to run away from the ship. Integrity is a real big thing for me and loyalty. 
Five games later, and he quits for Rangers. The one in Scotland. Richardson's tattoo. Um, how Richardson, in the space of a few years, this guy has gone from grubby Watford winger to, uh, Neymar's mate. I'm part of the cool kids gang, but just like a nerd who longs to be accepted by the popular rugby jocks, I think he's tried a bit too hard, because he's not only just got his own face, but Neymar's face tattooed on his back for life. And apparently, because Neymar is so creeped out by this, he's actually offered £26,000 to have this removed from Richie's back. Even he thinks this is weird. And this is coming from a guy who probably pays for his sister's only fans. Oh, it's all just a bit... Weird. Eto loses his head. Remember when Simon Eto beat up a journalist at the World Cup? I mean, if he was just a retired ex-player, then okay. But he's literally the Cameroon president. Relax, Sam. Ashley evicts Coventry. We all thought Mike Ashley was gone from the sport forever, right? No more annoying football fans, right? And now we hear that he just served Coventry City with an eviction notice for their own ground. I mean, come on, Mike. Does this guy just live off nothing but hamburgers and the tears of football fans? Ailey chaos. You would think that Australia's brilliant World Cup showing would have triggered a feel-good factor in that country's domestic league, right? Singing in the stadium, the fans taking pride in their own players. Instead, the reality is that uh, an Australian football match, the Melbourne Derby, had to be abandoned after the fans invaded the pitch and the goalkeeper was hit in the face with a bin? An actual bin! Emiliano Martinez. Just. Just Emiliano Martinez. Everything he did after that World Cup final, just. Stupid. Anyway, let's watch it. Let me know in the comments. What do you think have been the weirdest moments? Let me know. Did I miss any out? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.